Hi guys, welcome back to DX News. This is Lewis. We got some pretty interesting news for you today. But first off, damn, it was a quite a nice few days, you know, of price action. Bitcoin hit 25k for the first time in weeks. We also saw Ethereum shortly hit 2,000. Matic topped a dollar. Even Harmony One reached three cents. Now it didn't really last long, but damn, it was really it was really cool to see. Now, don't take any of this as financial advice. We're just here looking, sitting by, and hoping that the bull run will start. The block recently spoke with the wife of Alexei Persi, uh, whose name is Senya Malik. They spoke on Thursday, and she confirmed that her husband had indeed been arrested. She said that the Dutch Fiscal Information and Investigation Service, or FIOD, FUD for short, arrested him on August 10th. Now, the timing of this is quite interesting because it comes only days after the U.S. government imposed sanctions on Tornado Cash. They are alleging that the platform has laundered over $7 billion in illegally obtained funds. Now, to be clear, $7 billion is the rough amount of total funds that have been um, flown through Tornado Cash, but it does not indicate that all of these funds are from illegal proceeds. However, about $1.5 billion has been flagged to have been obtained from illegal activities, according to some blockchain researchers. So the data is not bad. However, you cannot mix in the vast amount of people who use this tool as a means for enhancing their privacy with common criminals. The agency says that the mixer allows cyber criminals um, to launder illegally obtained funds, most specifically um, state-backed hackers out of North Korea. Naughty, naughty, Kim Jong-un. Let me also add that GitHub, the platform that hosted Tornado Cash Code, suspended the account of Tornado Cash's founder, Roman Semenovs. Now, just think for a second, who, who does GitHub belong to? Now, we're here at the edge of a very slippery slope because the government is going after people for creating code or tools. Now, it depends on the individual users how you're gonna use these tools. So, I got some comparable scenarios for you to consider. Do you sue a gun manufacturer if some sick, sick fuck grabs a gun and goes to a school and shoots up a whole bunch of kids? No, right? Well, if, you, if you're the U.S. government, you don't do anything about it. You turn a blind eye. That's your MO. If someone copies your code and uses a tool that you created to scam users, who's the one at fault here? The person who created the code or the copycat? If banks cause a worldwide global meltdown of the economy, do you sanction the banks? No, you bail them out and you screw their users, of course. If someone uses your platform to promote scam projects, who's at fault here? The creators of the platform or the scammers? Now, if all of this happens via smart contracts, why the hell don't we just arrest Vitalik for his contribution to that shit in the first place? And if this goes on over the internet, why don't we just sue the internet? Moving on to a recent attack on the Polkadot chain, a newly established LP pool was misconfigured and it allowed an attacker to mint $1.2 billion in AUSD, which is a stable coin in the Polkadot network. Specifically, it was a IBTC AUSD liquidity pool and the $1.2 billion represented over 99% of the supply. Now, naturally, it caused the stable coin to depeg and it hit as low as the 50, 50 cent ballpark range before recovering a little bit, but not fully to the $1 mark. This misconfiguration has since then been rectified and the trading has been stopped. Now, the 1.2 bill has been in the vast majority frozen. The afflicted team is now asking the white hat hackers to return any funds that they may have on a Polkadot or Moon River address. So just notice the pattern of the things we've been talking about over the last couple of episodes. There's been a lot of hacks recently to security vulner vulnerabilities, big word. Now. These have been securities in audited contracts, which just goes to show you that security audits aren't foolproof. So always do your own research. Although if they can't pick up something, how are you gonna? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Moving on to the biggest exchange on BSC, PancakeSwap. Back in February, PancakeSwap hinted that they were gonna be creating a simple in-house game. And it was gonna be its first attempt to enter the GameFi niche. However, during a Twitter space on July 20, Chef Cadbury, the head of project management, said that that had been put on pause. Now, don't feel bad for them though, they do have a silver lining in this. And they announced actually that they're gonna go multi-chain. And it seems that the first chain they're going to invade, I mean expand to, is gonna be Ethereum. Which begs, which begs the question, why not XRP? Feel free to let us know in the comments below.
Now, PancakeSwap is the dominant force in the DeFi space in BSC chain. It has a lock value of over $3.3 billion, which is roughly more than half of the total lock value on the Binance chain. Now, overall in the blockchain spaces, PancakeSwap ranks eighth in total lock value. And you can find all of this information on DeFi Llama. Note, we are not paid advertising. Now, as PancakeSwap slows down their game development, guess who, picking, who is picking it up full steam ahead? But you guessed it, NFT brawlers, guys. And reminder, who is creating NFT brawlers? Of course, the OGs in the launchpad space. So there was a great review and a lot of amazing positive feedback. The fact that you're going to be able to give a little bit of utility to your old NFTs of abandoned projects actually put a smile on a, on a lot of people's faces. And let's not forget Hash's participation in the Blockchain Futures Conference. It was actually quite exciting. It brought a lot of attention to the DX booth. It was busy as can be. And the exposure was amazing. Behind the scenes, a lot of things are happening. The team is hardly working on new upgrades. I mean, working hard on new upgrades, new features, and new tools for version 4.0, new partnerships, taking opportunities, and more. Finish off strong, guys. Coinbase. Nah, just kidding. We're going to give them a break for this episode, but I'm sure they'll give us something to talk about by the next time we have to film. So guys, my name is Lewis, and as always, reminding you that it's 5 o'clock somewhere. I mean, do always do your own research. Cheers.